President Biden addressed the nation last night, calling on lawmakers to act decisively on gun reform in the United States. But what does decisive gun reform look like, and is it possible to stop or even reduce these shootings before they happen through stricter legislation on guns? State Senator Roland Gutierrez from Texas represents the district where the shooting occurred, and he joins me now for more on this. Senator, thank you for being here. I know it's a tough day, and I know it's a busy day um, for you, but. I, I want to look back for a second, because since Sandy Hook in 2012, the U.S. has endured more than 3,500 mass shootings, according to the Gun Violence Archive. And in this case, the shooter purchased two assault rifles right after he turned 18. He also had body armor. So how do we curb this? So thank you, Diane, for, for allowing me this time. You know, certainly I, right here, I'm, I'm, I'm in Uvalde to make sure my community has the necessary state resources that we need. To the larger policy issues, we need to do something for sure. Uh, I think at the federal level, we need to be talking about an assault weapons ban. We had uh, these types of violent effects before the ban. We had them after, but during that period, we didn't have, we didn't see these types of things happening in our country. At the local level, our state government, our, my Republican colleagues seem to be opening access to these types of weapons. We've tried to close a lot of those opportunities, make sure that there are restrictions in place, but we, to no avail. And so we have to make sure that we're creating laws in the state of Texas, as well as at the federal level, so that we can stop access to these types of militarized weapons. I'm a hunter. There's people in my, I know my district. There's nobody in this district that goes hunting with an AR-15. Now, uh, President Biden has used some executive powers to announce measures like uh, new regulations on so-called ghost guns last month, for example. Um, do you think there's more the White House can be doing, and is there anything else that you would like to see from the federal government in general? So I received a call yesterday from the White House, you know, speaking about things that we would be able to do for the Uvalde community grants for in particular for mental health. And that's greatly appreciated. But we need people in the Senate to break the filibuster and act immediately on legislation that is important in this space. We need to make sure that we stop seeing these types of militarized weapons. These are weapons that our military uses in the field of combat. Uh, I'm not here to take anybody's rifles away. I'm not here to take any way, anybody's guns away. But as this next legislative session unfolds in January here in Texas, I will seek to provide restrictions on access to these types of militarized weapons to these young men. How we do that, those policy details, we're going to get to them in the days and months ahead. Now, a new law, HB 1927, took effect on September 1st, 2021, there in Texas. And under that law, people who qualify can carry a handgun in a public place without a license to carry. What's your stance on that law, and how do you think it factors into this debate? I voted against open carry. I always have. Look, listen, uh, I'm, I know what my constituents ask when it comes to the Second Amendment. I know what their desires are. But at the end of the day, those same constituents said we don't want everybody just carrying a long rifle in our state. We had law enforcement throughout this state objecting to the, to the, spe to the passing of open carry. We need to go back this next session, repeal that, and make sure that we're putting in necessary restrictions on the availability of these types of weapons of mass disruption, weapons that are militarized weapons used by our military in the field of combat. Again, nobody in this rural community uses that type of weaponry to go hunting. And so, Senator, what do you say to people who look at an event like this and think, I need to be armed now more than ever to protect myself from someone like this? I'd say, uh, like I did this morning when I hugged my children, um, go hug your, go hug your babies before you send them to school, and look at them, and and look at what the future's like, because there's 19 parents here in Uvalde that aren't going to get to hug their babies anymore. I think people need to really start thinking about this in a big way. Yeah, I think it was hard for all parents. That's today. what I tell those folks. I definitely feel that. I think all parents felt a little bit of that today, sending our kids off to school and having to think about what if, what if that were me and what if one day, God forbid, it is.
Um, I want to ask you one more thing about the case, though, and what you make of the similarities so far between what happened there in Uvalde and the shooting in Buffalo, New York, less than two weeks ago, where, again, an 18-year-old in body armor with a rifle killed multiple innocent people and the fact that this shooter in Uvalde purchased his guns right after that attack. Yeah, I mean, the similarities abound, not just Buffalo, but many other incidences that we've seen in this country. You know, I, I want to call on, you know, people like Steve Kerr that have said we need to stop this because these similarities are these young men that are troubled, that didn't get the kind of love and attention they needed. This isn't the only young man. There's plenty out there, and we need to stop this. We need to do anything that's possible to stop this paradigm that keeps happening over and over again. And I, I would call on people like Steve Kerr and others, Matthew McConaughey, who was raised here in Uvalde, to stand up and say something and get the people that follow them on social media to say something and demand change from government. We don't need these types of militarized weapons on our streets anymore. I feel comfortable saying that and still saying you can have your Second Amendment right, but not to these types of weapons. And are there any other uh, measures, I should say, outside of gun control regulation that you think also uh, need to be speared to try to curb this? I passed, I, I filed a red flag bill last session. It went nowhere in a Republican controlled state Congress. Um, I've, my colleagues have passed infinite gun control measures on the Democratic side, which have gone nowhere in a Republican controlled state Congress. Listen, we are, it's a different kind of Democrat in Texas. You know, a lot of us are kind of in that middle of the road space and we get it. We understand it. We understand our constituents and we're from here. And I understand the very nature of, of our, of our hunting culture that we have, but this isn't that. Most of my hunters that I know will tell you the same thing. This isn't that. We have young, confused men, young men, violating lives across this country and violating families across this country. It is high time that we do something. I, I, my heart goes out to the people in my community here in Uvalde, but it's, we've got to take that to another level and do something now because if we can't do something then what are we what are we sending people up to washington for what are we sending people up to austin for we've got to do more texas state senator roland gutierrez we appreciate your time today senator and i'm so sorry for your loss uh, in that community in general we know the whole community is reeling right now so thank you and we're sorry Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.